Hey guys, welcome back to the channel where I cover missing persons, unsolved cases, crime news, and more. I had a totally different video recorded today at my lunch hour and was almost ready to put it out right after work when I put it all together after this morning's uneventful, non-trial stuff for Stephen Stearns, Stephen Stearns. And then, boom, this afternoon, big, big breaking news. We finally, finally, finally have murder charges in the death of Madeline Soto. Stephen Stearns was officially indicted by a grand jury this morning in Osceola County. And the presser was pretty brief, but I'm going to play that right now. All right, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for coming. Um, today, the Kissimmee Police Chief and myself are here to provide an update on the death investigation on 13-year-old Madeline Soto, uh, who was reported missing back on February 26th of this year um, and discovered dead four days later. I know the community and the media have been anxious for us to give an update on this case, um, and this is an opportunity for us to do that. For the last seven weeks, uh, seven and a half weeks, actually, the Consumer Peace Department and my office have been working closely to uh, go over every piece of evidence that we could gather in this case. Um, it, it was a voluminous um, and a lot of evidence to get through during that time, but we were successful in getting through it uh, and making sure that we were able to provide, provide um, the best case we could. Uh, today, we're announcing that uh, Stephen Stearns has been indicted by the grand jury on first degree murder. Uh, for the killing of Madeline Soto. Uh, <clears throat> we presented the case to the grand jury. Um, they returned an, an indictment earlier today. Um, the, there has been some questions as related to the length of investigation. I just want to let you know again that my office and the Kissimmee Police Department have been working vigilantly in making sure that we had every opportunity to get every piece of evidence that we could. Um, I want to thank the Kissimmee Police Department um, and their tireless efforts. Um, they've done an amazing job um, in, the, in the heavy lift that we've asked them to do, um, as well as the prosecutors that have been assigned to this case and making sure that we got every piece of evidence reviewed and gathered in this case. Uh, while death, and death investigations usually take around five to six weeks or longer, uh, we were able to get this one done relatively quickly and get the case to the front of the grand jury, like I said earlier today, to return the indictment against Mr. Stephen Stearns. The death penalty in this case, um, we have not decided to like what decision we're going to make in that case. Uh, we're going to continue those discussions going forward, and we'll let you know again uh, when we make that decision as to whether we're going to seek the death penalty in this case. I want to thank the grand jury uh, for their hard work uh, and, and their efforts in making sure that we're making this first step in seeking justice for Madeline Soto, uh, for her family, um, and so this on um, the community can have closure in this case. <clears throat> the defendant will appear um, at initial appearances, uh, I believe probably in the next uh, day or two. Um, then the case will proceed down its normal path, um, and we'll try to keep you abreast of um, how the case is moving, uh, as well as you probably ask us questions to make sure that we are uh, providing that proper information to keep you abreast of how the case is going down the, ne the normal path of the criminal justice system. Uh, I'd like now to introduce um, <clears throat> Chief of Police Betty Holland and for her to provide comment. Thank you, to, thank you, State Attorney Mr. Bain. Um, good afternoon, everyone. I want to thank the investigators and the other agencies that assisted us in uncovering the evidence to move forward with this case. We know this case has gained significant public attention because Madeline had just celebrated her 13th birthday and was just a child. The evidence shows an individual that was entrusted to keep Madeline safe made calculated moves to dispose Madeline's belongings and place her body in a wooded area before she was ever reported missing. For the four days following her disappearance, the entire community was actively looking to find Madeline safe and alive. Tragically, on March 1st, Madeline's remains were found. Our detectives have worked tirelessly to piece together the events leading up to Madeline's disappearance and death. 
With the collaboration of the state's attorney's office, we prepared the case for the grand jury that was heard today. The grand jury determined that our department secured enough evidence to obtain a first-degree murder indictment. We appreciate each grand jury member for their careful consideration. We want to thank the diligent work of the state's attorney's office, the medical examiner's office, and our other law enforcement partners who assisted with this investigation. Your expertise and dedication were instrumental in uncovering the truth. The indictment signifies a crucial step forward in our quest for justice and a testament to our commitment to honoring Madeline's memory. We will now take questions. Right, I'm going to defer to the state's attorney. Good afternoon. Although an indictment has been returned this afternoon, it is still an open and ongoing criminal investigation. So much of this information cannot be disclosed until Mr. Stern's attorney, if he does so, elects to participate in discovery, and then all of you in the media know how to go about seeking information through public records. Was there anyone else in that Not that we've uncovered. State attorney? Again, all questions about the facts of the case are not subject to disclosure because of public records laws at this time. Once his attorney participates in discovery, then you can make public records requests through your normal channels as you do in other cases. At this time, the only person being charged is Stefan Stearns. And again, this is not over. There is an ongoing investigation to un uncover more evidence, and therefore we can't comment. There's going to be the same response on any question about the facts of the case. Through the facts of the case. So with any death case that uh, is reviewed by my office, uh, when it's determined to be a homicide, uh, we have to look at the statutory aggravating factors that are laid out in our Florida law. Uh, but once we've determined uh, that we have sufficient evidence to prove those factors uh, to the proper evidentiary standard, uh, then we have to have to talk about whether this is a death penalty case. And that's a discussion that we're still going to be having for the next couple of weeks to make sure that we're making a legal decision that's appropriate in this case. I'll leave that for Mr. Will. Cannot comment on whether Mr. Stearns has been doing anything. He has counsel. Um, and as far as plea offers, no, there are no plea offers made on the open case. You can address uh, that question with the indictment that should be on the clerk's website if it's not already. I'm going to have to defer to the state's attorney. Sorry. Again, any question about the facts of the case, it's going to be the same answer. Once his attorney participates in discovery, the public records laws change, and you all will be able to get a lot of that information. As far as the 60 counts that are already filed against Mr. Stearns, that is solely involving Mr. Stearns as a defendant. Not to those 60 charges. It's an ongoing investigation. Can't comment on who's working with us. This will be the last question. I'll let you get that in. What was it? It's facts of the case. Can't comment it. So thank you all so much for coming out today. If you need this gentleman's name, it is Will J, W-I-L-L-J-A-Y. He is our homicide unit chief for the state attorney's office for the Ninth Judicial Circuit. Thank you all so much for coming out today. We knew they weren't going to say too much. And the documents 
while redacted have just hit the uh, Osceola County Clerk's website. So I'm going to pull that up and we can go through that. So this is, there's three different documents on the clerk's website. This one is the first one that was filed. It's in the circuit court of the 9th Judicial Circuit in and for Osceola County, Florida. Uh, and this would be the indictment that came from the grand jury. It's got the case number 2024-CF-1293, State of Florida versus Stephen, Stephen rather, Michael Stearns. Division is first degree murder capital. The grand jurors of the county of Osceola duly called, impaneled, and sworn to inquire in true precedent make in and for the body of the county of Osceola upon their oaths do present that Stephen Michael Stearns on or before the 25th day of February 2024 and the 27th day of February 2024 in said county and state did in violation of Florida statute 782.041A1 from a premeditated design to affect the death of Madeline Soto, a human being, unlawfully kill Madeline Soto. It's a true bill. It was signed by the foreperson, which of course is redacted. It's signed by the state attorney, Andrew Asher Bain, and the clerk of courts uh, right there. And let's see here. We have the summons, um, Capius. Uh, Social Security number looks like the only thing redacted here. So that's served to him, I believe, by his attorney's office. So then we've got the state of Florida versus uh, Stephen Michael Stearns. Uh, this is the Capius charges, first degree murder, capital. And there's the statute number in the name and by the authority of the state of Florida to all in singular sheriffs and other arresting officers of the state. You are commanded forthwith to arrest and bring Stephen Michael Stearns before the judge of our court in the courthouse in Kissimmee, Osceola County, Florida on instanter to answer an information or complaint filed and now pending in said court and have then in there with this wit with uh, due return of your actions enclosed thereon. Witness my hand and seal of said court of Osceola County, Florida, this 24th day of April, 2024. Signed by Sandra B. Uh, Deputy Clerk. And there's his information because they hadn't served it yet. So then the second one, the last one rather, would be when it's executed. All right, and here's the final document that's up there uh, is that same paperwork. And when it was um, actually served by the uh, by the sheriff's office, so it was they got the warrant on today, the April twenty fourth, executed same on the twenty fourth day of April twenty twenty four in Osceola County, Florida, Florida, by arresting the within name uh, Stephen Stearns and having him before the court. Obviously, he's very easy to serve because he's in the Osceola County Jail on Simpson Road. So he has been notified that he is charged with the murder, first degree murder of 13 year old Madeline Soto. Very, very sad, this entire case. Um, I'm very happy though that we're looking like justice is finally getting served. And I realized they said it could take five to seven weeks or what have you, but you know, we live in a society we like things to happen like instantaneously. But at the same time, we want them to make sure they have all their um, I's dotted, all their T's crossed, you know, all that sort of stuff. And they're not done. So there's going to be a lot more stuff coming out. So we don't know at this point if Jen Soto is going to be facing any charges. And as of this morning, they had a new court date of July 10th for pre-trial for Stephen Stearns as far as the um, child, uh, the CSAM charges, those 60 charges and a tentative uh, trial date for a jury trial of August 19th. So I don't know if that'll also, I mean, we still don't know if that was going to be happening on those dates anyway. But at the same time, my question is, are they going to combine these charges into one trial or are they going to do two different trials? That I don't know. It would be interesting to definitely see. Uh, for those of you who missed that particular appearance this morning, Stephen Stearns did not appear in court. He uh, waived that apparently the evening before, according to his attorney. And his attorney asked for the extension due to he was not prepared. 
and uh, I will play that briefly before we close out the video. Received an offer for your consideration this morning. We're going to be talking about the status of the case, whether the case is ready for trial, whether you wish to resolve your case uh, by way of a plea, or whether you are requesting more time and there's cause to grant that request. Mr. Parton, do you need to be back in uh, front of Judge Beamer? In fact, I do, Your Honor. Thanks. State of Florida versus Stephen Michael Stearns, 2024, CF 632. Jake Barton for Mr. Stearns. Crystal Allen for the state. Thank you. Your Honor, I filed a motion to continue, as well as a waiver of Mr. Stearns' appearance last night, uh, indicated to Ms. Pinnell that would be our position today. Uh, she indicated she had no objection. I'm going to ask for a couple dockets. I had originally tried to view uh, the material in the state's possession last week, although, as the court is aware, I've been in trial with Judge Beamer for now a week and a half. Um, so it's going to take some time to do that, as well as depositions and any pretrial motions. So I would say at least two dockets. Pockets. Um, obviously, if for whatever reason I'm able to wrap that up quicker, uh, I can always contact your JA and get this back on an earlier pretrial docket or, or file demand for Speedy. State? The state has no objection to a continuance. I think that uh, two dockets may be a bit short, but I'll leave it in Mr. Parton's discretion. Given that he's in custody, I'd rather go for short and have to ask for more time than have him sitting there if we're ready to go. All right, thanks. Uh, looks like this is uh, the first time this case has been up on the docket. Mr. Parton, there has been a uh, amended information filed that was filed on uh, April 11th. Have you seen that document? Yes, Your Honor. All right, thanks. Uh, shall I set that for an arraignment, or are you going to be on a written? Uh, we had already waived the original reading to him, so we'd enter a plea of not guilty. I'd waive the arraignment, any technical defects in 24-hour period. Thanks. All right, we'll accept the uh, uh, waiver, accept pleas of not guilty to the six counts uh, of the amended information filed on April 11th, 2024. Uh, Pretrial is going to be on July 10th at 9 o'clock, sorry, at 1.30, uh, with a trial period that begins August 19th. Okay. Thank you, Your Honor. That's all I have, Your Honor. May I be excused? And that's all I have, Your Honor. May I be excused? Thank you. So again, we'll see if we have anything happening in July for a pretrial for the uh, CSAM charges and we'll get a trial in August or if if even that's going to get tossed out the window at this point because I don't know. It, it, it makes you wonder if they're going to combine those charges with this new murder charge. Uh, that That's something we're going to have to see. And also remember at the presser, they, they don't know yet if they're going to pursue the death penalty. Uh, death penalty is big, obviously, in the state of Florida here. So uh, it's definitely on the table for them to potentially uh, use. And our governor has made it very clear that it could be, you know, used for, for uh, um, SA crimes and what have you. So we shall see if they pursue that. But... Irregardless, he's he's not going to ever see the light of day besides standing outside in, behind bars in a prison area outside. Like, you know, that, what do they go over? They call that like a playground area. I don't even know what they call it. But he's not going to see anything close to freedom for the rest of his life. And uh, I think... Uh, I think he deserves it. I mean, I hope every day he thinks about the horrible, horrible things he, he did to Maddie. I really do. I hope he, the last thing he sees at night is this beautiful girl's face and he cries himself to sleep because of everything he did to hurt her. But I'm glad that she's she's been in a much better place and that she doesn't have to deal with that anymore. All right, guys, let me know what you think of all these new updates in the comments and with that said i hope you have a great rest of the day and most of all stay safe <laughs>